And I am amazed how easy it is to use the RYC-1001, including its database capability. I decided to further explore it, and this time using an actual devices to simulate a home automation setup. I have here prepared a hardware where this ESP32 development board will serve as MQTT client which will be located in the home location. It will be a middleman or interpreter between connected things which is an input and output devices and the IoT server which is in my case the Rayax RYC1001. I use a DHT22 sensor which is an input device connected to ESP32 to publish temperature and humidity readings to Rayax IoT server. I also use an array of relays which is an output device connected to ESP32 and subscribe to a certain topics as a source of control to turn it on or off. Now to make this demo more realistic, I will use another ESP32 development board which is this Helltech development board with an OLED display for displaying the temperature and humidity readings by subscribing to the topic published by the DHT22 sensor. This ESP32 development board will serve as a remote MQTT client. I connected some buttons for controlling the relays. It should publish to a certain topics to Rayax IoT server. So basically, our setup looks like this. The DHT22 sensor, which is attached to the ESP32 do it board, will publish a notification message to the Rayax server, RYC1001, under a subtopic, temperature. When any MQTT server receives a published data, it will dispatch the received data to all the subscribed MQTT client, which is in this case, the Helltech ESP32 board. And in the end, will be displayed to the OLED display. Another is the buttons, which is attached to Helltech ESP32 board, will publish a command message to the Rayax server under a subtopic control lights. When any MQTT server receives a published data, it will be transferred to all the subscribed MQTT client, which is in this case the ESP32 do it board. And in the end, will be applied to the relay state. I use an external power supply, which is this one, in powering the 5 volts relay. And as you can see, the jumper pin is connected to 5 volts, while in this side, the jumper pin is connected to 3.3 volts. By that way, this power rail will provide 5 volts, while this one will provide 3.3 volts. I also use it for powering both ESP32 development board, which is, as you can see, this black and white jumper wire is connected to the power rail, and this brown and red color is also connected to the 3.3 power rail, which will power both the ESP32 development board. And for additional client, I set up an MQTT.fx desktop application for debugging purposes. Now for the software part, I have here. So this source code is for the do it ESP32 board while this one is for the Helltech. I also uploaded it to the ESP32 MicroPython root directory and save it as main.py so that it will be executed when ESP32 is reset or power up. Without any further delays, I will press the power switch of the external power supply to power our demo circuit. Let's give it some time to let it connect to the internet 
then it will try to connect to the Rayax IoT server. If not, it will reset itself and it will try to connect again. When we see that the onboard LED is blinking, it means that the ESP32 successfully connected to the Rayax IoT server. And while this one, we cannot see any blinking LED, that means it is still not able to connect. Maybe the power. What I will do is I will press the reset. To okay. Now both are connected to IoT server, which is the RYC1001. Now let's demonstrate it. We may be able to turn on or turn off specific relay where we can connect appliances or machines in these terminals. But I will not do it because there is an LED indicator here that we can observe. So let's try to turn on this port LED by pressing this last buttons. I will press. Okay, let's try the second one. It takes time because my internet is not so good. Anyways, also the DHT sensor readings may be viewed here in the OLED display. And as you can see, the temperature in my room is 27.3, uh, 27.9 degrees Celsius. Well, the humidity is 68.4%. With the advancement of IoT technology, these two ESP32 board will work even separated miles away as long as there is a Wi-Fi connection. Now let's briefly discuss the source code for both ESP32. Let's begin with the ESP32 do it board. Just like before, we always begin with the imports of the necessary libraries. Then we create the necessary objects. Then we configure the ESP32 Wi-Fi as a station. And there is a constant and variables. I also have here some constants for the Reax. So, for the client ID, I use my username. Then, I added four digits of number, which is 0001. In this way, I can create a client ID, which is unique for my username. For the Reax URL, just put iot.reax.com. For the username, you may get this one after you purchase your Rayax RYC1001 account and the password. And for the topic publish or topic pub underscore pub or publish, which is API slash request. Now for the topic subscribe or topic underscore sub is API slash command slash 35 which is the network id slash 5 which is the device type id slash this one which is the device id slash control lights then we created an mqtt client named client after that one we try to connect to the MQTT server. If there is an error, we will disconnect from the MQTT client, then we reset the ESP32 and it will try again. Else, if there is no error and it is able to connect to the MQTT server, we will set the callback function, which will be called 
when there is a new message in MQTT, which is, we just parse the received data and converts it to JSON string. Lastly, we subscribe to Apic Sub. Then we have the main loop. In the main loop, we first check if the stop log is true. Stop log will become true when the onboard boot button is pressed. If it is pressed, it will disconnect from the MQTT server and it will set the stop log to true so that when we press the boot button it will disconnect from MQTT it will blink the onboard LED rapidly else if the stop log is not true if the boot button is not pressed this is the normal operation so first we check if there is a new message if there is, the callback function will be called, then the message plug will be set to true. When the message plug is true, we can parse the individual values from the JSON data to get the values of light 1, light 2, light 3, and light 4, which are these relays. This is light 1, light 2, light 3, and light 4. So, if the light one is on, we will set the relay to value 0 because the value here is inverted. Else, if the light one message is off or the data payload for the light one is off, we will set the relay one value to high. So, it's the same for all other relays. I also created here a separate time interval for blinking the onboard LED, which is this blue, and here is the white one, so that it can blink every 1000 milliseconds. Yeah, 1000 milliseconds for the blink, and for update interval is 5000 milliseconds or 5 seconds. So, if it's time for sending the DHT22 sensor readings to MQTT server, we will get the measurement as a string. Then we will include it in the payload for publish, which is this one, temp for the temperature and UMI for the humidity. Then we will publish it. Of course, according to the topic publish. And for the Heltec ESP32 board, it's almost identical with a slight difference. In the Do-It ESP32 board, the DHT22 sensor readings is published by encapsulating it to the notification message. While in the Heltec, the button state is published using the command message, which is under the subtopic control lights, while the notification is under the subtopic temperature. Here, we publish it using command message, while in the do it, we use a notification message. Let's further explore it. We can turn off the uh, number two relay. Turn on the Relay 1 and Relay 3. Okay. Now to safely terminate the program or turn off the ESP32, we need to disconnect from MQTT server. To do that, I use the boot button which is in Do It ESP32 board. The boot button is here. While in Heltec, the boot button is here. To do that, I will use the boot button. 
so that it will send a disconnect message to the server. Let me press the boot button. Boot button. And this one. And when the onboard LED blinks rapidly, it only means that it's now safe to power down the ESP32. So that's it. I will leave the details in video description. If you decided to use the RYC1001 IoT Cloud Platform. I hope you enjoy and learn something from this. If you have any concern regarding this tutorial, please write your question in the comment box provided. If you enjoyed this video, please give me double thumbs up by clicking the like button and share this to your friends so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. And if you are new to this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will be notified when a fresh video like this is uploaded. You might also like to visit my blog post at techtotinker.blogspot.com for more details such as circuit diagram and source code. Thank you and have a good day ahead. God bless. Bye-bye.